What is up, Robert? <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome back. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know what we're getting ready to do. Jeremy has scoured YouTube and has found another interesting video that he thinks I'd like to watch and that you might like to watch my reaction of. Now, this video is a little bit differently. Uh, Jeremy said this one has more to do with agricultural fence than the uh, residential or commercial fence that we're used to seeing. I don't install agricultural fence. My company, our company, never has for three generations. It's just not something we do. There's not a lot of call for it here in southwest Missouri. However, I do like to learn a thing or three. So, let's check it out together. The video is titled, Building Pipe Fence, No Coping or Saddling Pipe. Interesting. The video will be linked in the description below if you'd like to watch the full thing without my running commentary. First and foremost, this guy has a pretty slick setup that's, uh, that's built directly into his truck. That's nice. What is up, guys? Austin Ross here. I am just pulled up to this job that Mitchell and I have been working on. He's got all the posts marked, ready to cut off. So that's what I'm fixing to start doing is cut them all off to height using a beveling machine, just straight cut, and then uh, go from there. But anyway, yeah, for those of you who don't know, my name is Austin Ross. I've been a pipeline welder for the last seven or eight years, but here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and pipeline lifestyle here recently i've been doing more just rig welding work like mobile rig welding a lot of it being on fence but anyway let's get started i like to have a clean tip i like to get all this squared away first thing since i'm working on trying to keep the quality of work up so i'm going to do this before i get started instead of getting in a hurry which with the bevel machine you can get away with a little bit more dirty of a tip because it's way more steady but there was one hole that was completely clogged up and I did not like that. It bothers me. Alright boys, alright! Ah, so he's got a torch, he's going to torch these things off. Goes all the way around. That's slick. Yeah. Look at he split, huh? That is, that's incredible. This follows the mark. Now the posts are a different height, probably because they got driven. I wish driving posts was a thing here in Southwest Missouri. We've tried it, it's not worked well. There's too much rock in the ground. I'm not sure where this guy's at. All right. Over. Got all the posts nice. cut off. Now I have been over here most of the afternoon cutting the rails. Me and Mitchell took measurements of all the situations. We are actually cutting holes in the pipe. That's what Mitchell's doing right now. He's laid it all out. And now he's going through and cutting all of the post with handy dandy circle burner, which is what this job is if you've seen last week's video i used this to cut that big lid out if you haven't you can go check out that video we'll put a link in the description but uh yeah this handy dandy thing goes on straight torch popping holes in the four inch post that kind of thing works that whenever thing you've got slick. bigger post and new pipe from the little i've done asking other guys that have had way more experience building fence uh, it's, I don't know which is faster, but this is definitely cleaner and more or less work when it comes to the saddling uh, situation. But uh, the way I've seen it done is you would cut saddles into your rails and then weld those onto the post. But it looks like they're actually cutting through the post, running straight rail into it, and then welding. 
So doing it this way is probably structurally stronger because you're directly tying it to the post. That way, even if you had a bad weld or whatever, still there's no way this thing's coming out. Interesting. I don't know. It worked good on a fence that Mitchell and I worked on last year, so that's uh, why he's doing it here. So um, when you kind of streamline things like this, we got to talking. We could actually cut some of these rails that I'm doing now in a shop. You know, once you get all your posts set, you pull all your measurements, because they go inside the, the uprights, you know, roughly an inch on each side. So you could always, you know, if you're planning this job ahead of time, you could actually streamline this type of thing. So anyway, there's... Yeah, if you had one measurement, you know, so if you said, hey, we're going to set these things or pound these things on 10-foot centers or whatever it is, yeah, you could just run all your pipe through your shop, cut them all at a standard length. You probably have some short sections here or there. You might need to field cut those few, but you could really streamline that process. Instead of having to cut every section of pipe for that particular section of uh, welded fence. That's the way we're doing pipe it, fence. and that's what I've been doing got my old evolution job saw. I actually got a new one at the shop that evolution sent me to try out. It's What's evolution a newer model. This one's eight or ten years old now. Um, but it's it's been good. Wouldn't say it's the best saw in the world, but it is a very good chop saw. You can see I got a blade over there. It's a cold cutting blade and I like it way more. It's way more accurate, less burr compared to like the abrasive blade because that's all I'd ever heard of until So that's actually the same setup we found in the setup just like this uh, at Fence Tech 2017, 2018. Before that, we were using the abrasive blades. Those things are dirty. Like that abrasive dust gets everywhere. I don't care how good of, of a suction setup you've got to where you know it's pulling all that dust away into collection, it still gets everywhere. So switching over to the actual cutting blades was a huge step up. I worked on drilling rigs eight or ten years ago, and that's whenever guys I worked with had the Evolution brand. That's the only reason I brought the Evolution, but uh, it's a fair saw, I would say. You know, it does it does good. Anyway, it is about time to go to the house. We'll be back tomorrow to rock and roll some more. What's this? What's what? Why'd you sand this down? So I could get closer. Hmm. Smaller hole. Yeah. I guess that'd be the like it. The right question. The right answer. How's it going over here? Look like well, it's a learning curve on the two and seven eighths, but I think uh, we got her, slick. got her lick now. Looks good. Ready to rock and roll. Shoot. It looks like a, uh, reminds you of the round rail, wood rails that uh, work with dowels, obviously larger. But, uh, man, that's a slick look. All right. It's the next day. Backing into my chop saw hole here. Keep on a cutting some, cutting some rails to length. Pull my, oh. <clears throat> Pull my situation across here because it is hot in Oklahoma. Oh, Got much better. Oh, much right next door to us here in Missouri. Very nice. About to. First things first, we've got to put a new blade. And that truck bed is slick. I tried Mitchell's Makita blade yesterday and I really liked it. The Evolution blade is good, but. Makita just made a little different, and I thought I was going to get a hold of a Makita this morning, but the place that I called didn't have it, so I'm trying out this. It's a cheaper, I don't know what brand, but... I'm interested to see what he thinks about the Diablo blades. Mixed reviews in our shop. Some guys like them, some guys don't. Interested to see what his his feedback is on them. This thing, and I don't... I don't know, I'm not expecting much out of it, but I'm gonna work for today. I did get an Evolution Blade as a backup because I still have quite a bit of these to cut. So that is what I've been doing this morning. The only reason I'm wearing a hard hat is literally for protection from the sun. 
burnt my face yesterday. Burnt my old face yesterday. This, this brand is coming back to me. I've used this brand of blade years ago. Don't remember how I liked it. We will find out. As you can see in that video, so it makes the nice thing about these blades as opposed to an abrasive blade is it's a much cleaner cut. You see a lot less burrs. Uh, it's if you guys haven't tried out the cold cutting blades, you absolutely should. Looks good, man. It's exciting. It's like a lot of prep, but like way worth it. You I know? Think so. I think so too. I really think if there's probably a number, but probably something like I bet you there's like anything after like 40 or 50 feet. I'm pretty confident this is faster than coping because you need the. So judging by all the dirt on the ground, it looks like they drilled and set those. Um, I really thought that the varying height was due to them driving them, just driving them to a grade and leave a little bit on top to get cut off. So you'd cut the mushroom tops off. Being that now we know that they're in Oklahoma, they probably have a similar circumstance to where driving isn't isn't really feasible. I mean, you'll have some holes that you can drive. You'll have some areas here that you can drive posts in, but when you're getting set up to to do it in a production setting. If you have, you know, more than a handful of holes that you actually have to drill and dig, you might as well just set up to do that rather than being set up for both. Quantity to, to justify doing it this way. Sure, yep, yep. And like we talked about, new pipe and bigger pipe. Right. Right, obviously. And enough of it to make it worth it, I agree. Because there's, there's the setup that goes along with doing it this way where if you're doing like three or four ten foot sections, you might as well just cope them and slap them up there and roll. Sure, sure, yep, yep. Yep, I'm excited. Coming together. Not too bad. Buff the slag off there, quick little 5P pass, and then a fat 8010. Oh, yeah. Looking slick. I mean, nice, nice. Listen to the silence. I love morning times. It's kind of overcast this morning. Not too hot. Mmm, peaceful. But I'm ready to rock and roll. I've got a few more posts to cut this morning. Mitchell's almost done blowing all the holes in the pipe. We'll go through there and kind of clean up them holes. I think he's bringing his tractor today so we can, you know, lift up all these posts that I've been cutting and take them over and start putting them in. And then uh, go to tacking them in and welding them out and put caps, sand all the caps down, and we'll have gates to hang. So hopefully we can get some what Mitchell calls a uh, show iron or what welders, those of you that are welders, you know we call it show iron, like getting a bunch of stuff in there tacked up. Still a lot of welding out to be done, but at least you can actually see what it is uh, after today, you know, so I'm excited. But I've got just, I think, seven times four more posts to cut. Seven times four is 28, right? We're out from yesterday. Check out these gate jacks I modified. Cut the, well, you can't see them, it's covered up, but 
Anyway, that's a squirrel moment. What I'm gonna do first thing this morning is cut some of this pipe right here and tack on the feet of that jack stand there with the roller heads on it that I've been using. With these heads right here, this head right here. See, the only thing is, is look, it doesn't stay rolly. But anyway, I'm gonna tack some pipe on there and then drive these stakes down that we use to stake our skirting down in all three legs to keep it from uh, tipping over whenever I slide the pipe. That is what I'm doing. This blade, I'll have to add up how many cuts I've had on it so far on this pipe that is two and seven eighths, three sixteenths thick, whatever you call that. Middle of the day yesterday I counted like 32, but I've probably done twice that many, so I'm, I'll add them up and uh, say for sure how many cuts after after I finish today. But uh, it's, it's, doing, it's doing decent for a 60, 70 dollar blade compared to 100, some of them are 100 bucks or more. But anyway, yep, probably gonna get over 100 cuts out of it, sounding like. But anyway, yeah, yeah, let's get started. I definitely didn't have 32 left to cut. I only had, what did I come up with? 18, or no, 14. I think 14 more posts. Seven joints I knew I needed, and they're roughly 20 foot joints, so get two out of each one. So 14 pieces is what I had left. But what I come to figure out is I done the math on it, and I think I got, I thought I was just gonna, just gonna have over 100, but I had cuts on this blade, roughly, minus five, give or take. Because uh, some joints are shorter, you can see around the driveway, and I got three or four out of one joint. Anyway, now I'm going to go over here and clean up these holes, I guess. Those blades, and it might be personal preference on those. Um, like you said, they are a less expensive blade. Sound like he had decent success out of them. Uh, got 128 cuts which uh, on that looked like it was, so it's all red iron, which different wall thicknesses, I guess, but it'd be something similar to what looked like a Schedule 40 or a CS40. So not bad. Like I said, mixed bag here. We've got some guys, the Evolution blades are super nice, but they're also expensive. Uh, the Diablo blades, they're not half as expensive, but they're pretty close. So, but some guys won't use them, so. It's going to be just an incredibly strong fence. Hold in whatever livestock you got in and keep out, uh, you know, runaway semis. Sharp. Well, there you have it, folks. That is one neat, neat fence, I tell you. I beg them to tell you. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. 
Mitchell and my brother-in-law built a fence like this last year. Well, it was one I helped weld on, but I don't think I made a video of it. But it was a four inch post like this and two and three eighths cross members, still four rail. And they done that method where they blew the holes in the pipe and they really liked it, but it was a whole bunch of it. It was more than this. This is about 350 foot roughly. And the stuff they done was just under 2,000 feet, I think. But anyway, sense. and Mitch really liked the way it turned out. And that's why we've done it here. And what I like about it, it's kind of, it's way different than like what I was used to or what I'm, I am used to or whatever. What I done in high school and like before I started pipeline, you know, I worked for a bunch of farmers and and uh, worked for a guy that you know built fence by the foot but he done a bunch of feedlots and you know speed is everything right and I mean there's more than one way to skin a cat like I say all the time but like I really like this way as far as the like it we spent two what is today Let's see I think I've been here for three so I spent roughly two days you know cutting pipe for 350 foot well no I cut the tops off and I cut pipe which cutting tops off only took like an hour and a half off of like 40, 44, 45 posts. But anyway, 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 a day or two cutting pipe, the cross members, and then Mitchell, like a day or something, day and a half cutting all the holes. So like you got all that prep, but then all of a sudden to have it all in there, like the fence is up. It still needs, you know, welded out. So you still, we're still gonna have a lot of time in it to finish it put all the caps on and stuff but as far as like getting it all done it's real I like it because you can streamline it and the it seems easier I guess I don't know I really like it but like I've said before you definitely can't do that on every fence because only if the posts are bigger and it's new pipe yeah, I'm sure you could do it on older pipe but you might run into more issues if it's old pool filled pipe and stuff or the you know you don't know what's inside of it or it doesn't cut as good you might you know you might run into more trouble than you bargained for trying to do it that way and once you cut the hole in the pipe that's it you know what I mean like you can put it back but it's it's not gonna be the same or it's gonna take a lot more time too so I would think too it'd be worth you know if there's an agricultural channel out there there's a few there's a few ag fence guys with YouTube channels I think it'd be worth testing the strength of it too. Now, you know, the weld is the strongest part. You know, if, if welded correctly, the weld will be the strongest part of that joint. So theoretically the, the steel should tear or the steel should fail before the weld does. But I still think that the blowing holes in the post and running the rails through the post, then welding it has to be structurally stronger than just saddling the rails and then welding them just straight to the pipe. Makes it so anyway pretty much to sum it up like i've said before everything is situation dependent and how much experience a guy has whenever he's doing a project i really like this way i think it's neat i think it's uh and i don't mean neat as in like cool i mean like neatly done you know everything's uh based off of a jig more or less you know still got to be skilled you know to run a circle burner and to do everything uh, to have the patience, you know, it takes patience to do it this way, but and cleaning everything up before you do it, I mean, it just, it just is real, real nice. I like this method. I really do. I do too, guys. <laughs> if you want to see the full video, like I said, the videos, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, if you guys are into ag fencing or welding in general, you should check out the Austin Ross's channel. I like how he explained it and how he thoroughly detailed the process. Uh, I'll be subscribing to his channel as well, just to, in general, just really watch his content. I enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think about the uh, the blowing the hole method. Is that what you call it? It's not probably at all what you call it, but this method of, of installing fence, I'd like to hear from you ag guys. If you guys would have done anything differently, I'd also like to hear that in the comments below. I always like hearing from you guys. Uh, but until next time, Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.